right, because it's a neap tide today, I can get away with the lighter continental style gear. So the other reel, you can see just down there, that's got 18 to 60 pound shock leader attached to 18 kilo Daiwa J braid. And that's for the lighter rod. And then for the slightly heavier rod, um, this is spooled with, I think it's Asso Low Stretch, about 15 pound and it's mono with a different colored, but the same leader, Asso Shock Leader, 18 to 60 pound. It's way more than you need for the light style of fishing I use with these rods, but I just like to have that margin of error into the shock leader because it's such an important component of your gear. But look at it, I mean, it's absolutely gorgeous today. It's, uh, there's no wind. Well, actually, there is some breeze. There was definitely breeze as I was driving along the coast. But, but we've either lost the sea breeze or it's just sheltered here. There's a couple of anglers up the way. These are the Moston docks. I don't know if, that, I don't know if you're that, that direction. And this is the channel, which is famous for its place. So let's see how we get on. Right, let's get this sorted. So I've got my rigs here. Spare waterproof cloth, I'll keep that out. And I've got my bait in here. And a cool bag. So I'll just take out what I need. So I've only got frozen lug at the moment, but later on I'm gonna go further up there and um, at low tide, you can get some nice muscles. So I'm gonna give that a go. But for now, it's gonna be frozen lug with some peter crab legs. And that's gonna go in the bait tray here. And the rest of the bait, the freezer pack, will stay fresh in that bag. And that's gonna go down back at the bottom. Got my lunch there, and then underneath I've got um, Hessian sack to keep fish fresh if I keep any. A filleting board and some spare rags and a measuring stick. That's it really. Pretty simple. All the sundry item and all the bits and bobs I need. Shock leader, trace, finger guard, a bit of sun cream, weights, you know, etc. Right, so the first rig, in fact maybe for both rigs, I think I'm just going to have a a simple one up, one down, and then maybe I'll try a two hook flapper on the other. We've got two up, one down there. Here we are, one up, one down. So I'll give that a go. Put that on first, bake that up, cast that out, and then I'll deal with the other rod. And these are fairly easy to get off the rig winders. I don't have a hook tied onto this trace, so tie on some hooks in a minute. I'm going to go with a three and a half ounce pyramid lead. So it's a little bit of a ability to kind of not trundle too much in the tide, but it's also, like I say, it's a neap tide. In the last two hours of the ebb, I can see that there's not too much of a flow out there, so we should be fine with this. And I'm only going to be fishing it two hours up as well, so I'll miss the worst of the flood. So it's just a four hour session really. So I'm going to panel these traces, which means I'm going to have a top hook, which will be this one, a chinu hook. I like the chinos because they're strong, but also they're short shanked and you don't need a long shank for the top hook. And then for the bottom hook, I'm just going to have a standard Aberdeen size one. So the chinu goes on first and then the Aberdeen. So a bit of frozen black lug goes on to the baiting needle. I've shown you this in other videos but you may not have seen those so I'll show it again. Now I use baiting needles with frozen blacks because it's a good bait but it does go very mushy once it's defrosted and obviously it's been in the water. So you do need the baiting needle it's not because it makes it easier to thread on the hook, it's because it allows you 
it acts as, as like a brace. You can see here, I've got the line tight here. Here's the baiting needle. The worm is parallel to the needle. And then I can just get some elastic, baiting elastic, and just wrap that round. The baiting needle, there's a bit of twist, but mostly it stops the thing from twisting around and being unmanageable. Okay, snap that off. And then take the needle out. And you've got a very nicely presented bait there. I would prefer to have fresh and I'd love to have peeler. But the place I had last year, the last time I came here, was on frozen black. But I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to try and get some fresh mussels later. And that's a fine bait. I mean, I'm confident of that. But still, I'm going to get some fresh mussels later up the way. And that uh, will put a, you know, a lot of the scent out there. Well, tide's a bit high for mussels, and being a neap, and there's only about an hour to go until the lowest of the tide, I'm not sure I'm going to get to the place where the best mussels are. So I think I'm just going to cut my losses and do the one trip and get these. They're not too bad. Some of them are too small. I'll take the bigger ones. I found a small cockle as well. That's always a good bait. It's a bit sloppy, but if you have a, a baiting needle with a two pronged baiting needle and you use the bait elastic, and actually it's a good bait, very good bait. Underused, underrated, free, easy to get. I haven't used it enough to really say if I think it's better than peeler crab, but I have to be honest, I think peeler is probably the better versatile all-round bait but considering I'm targeting place and place eat mussels then uh, I'm confident enough in this instance So this is a few mussels on the bottom with a crab claw, peeler crab claw in the middle and a little bit of lug on the top. So we've got a lug, crab claw, mussel cocktail here. 
plenty of scent in that. What you might find interesting about this shot is you can see the Veraticlisio rod on the left has a very different bend in its tip to the Verit Cosmico red rod on the right. Now the Cosmico and the Ecclisio I believe are essentially the same blank. The difference with the Ecclisio is it has spliced into it a solid tip and that solid tip gives it that kind of um, sensitivity at the end. So you get a more pronounced curve right at the very end of the rod. And it's a lovely rod to use with braid and light, well, braid, light lines, light fishing. Well, fishing must be bad because I'm having my lunch and haven't even had a bite. <laughs> you know what it's like. When you settle down, you pour a cup of coffee, tea, or have some lunch, and there you go, you have a bite, and you've got to put it down. Not that you're bothered, but it always seems to be the way. I just thought, right, I need a bite, so I'll, so I'll have some lunch. <laughs> it normally works, but it didn't this time. It's still a dropping tide. Maybe it's going to be that way until the tide slackens off and turns. Let's see.